Hey guys, happy Sunday morning. Welcome back. All right, look at that. It's almost September. We got one more day left in the month of August. Tomorrow, tomorrow's the 31st, and then Tuesday will start September. That's awesome. All right, what do we got here? All right, what I wanted to do for you guys was I wanted to kind of just do a review of this year, guys. I think we're at a point where there's really not much more information for you to see. Okay, there, there's going to be some trickling through, like obviously you guys know that they've talked about maybe passing roughly or uh, approving, amending roughly two more laws. They might do the election law and they might do the federal court law. Okay, they've talked about doing that. And then um, they've talked about, uh, they told us roughly a week and a half ago when they were here around August 20th, when they were in Washington, they said they have reached an agreement only through the end of 2020 though okay so so the, yeah they've said they've pretty much reached an agreement through 2020 so they're going to meet again to discuss um to further expand their agreement in in regards to the 2021 budget okay so let's let's review this the year let's look at everything that's happened guys because i think it's very important to go back and look and, and revisit what we've seen um that way you just you know where you stand okay so so what has happened this year what did we see through the beginning of this year okay pretty much through the very first quarter maybe up until april all you saw were articles where they kept talking about here's a new pm he's trying to form his government here's a new pm he's trying to form his government okay eventually after like once they reached the third pm they got Kademi in there. He got his government formed. Okay. The day that we saw him form his cabinet and basically complete the government. Okay. What did we see that evening, guys? We saw our first economic articles. Right there, they revealed to you what one of your delays were. It was a key layer of stability. Okay. They showed you. That, that Kademi had to form a government and have a complete form of government to push forward with stability, okay? But then from that point forward, you still saw, saw more articles where Baghdad kept talking about meeting with Kurdistan, okay? That, that was your next delay, all right? That they had to finish that. So, so they're showing you what the delays are before they can go international, okay? Now... You guys have already seen this, so but let's go through it, guys. This is very, very important. Okay, so so as of right now, we're in basically according to what they're showing us right here in factual print, guys. These are not my comments. These are this is a portion of an article. You guys already saw this article. This was just happened to be like the most important paragraph from that article. This was that article talking about why U.S. companies have not invested in Iraq for the past three years. Okay, so what I did was I grabbed this paragraph, I just brought it forward and kind of dissected it for you, kind of, you know, laid it out in the three sections here, because they said, here's the three reasons. Here's what they said. It said, there is a problem in implementing the deals and agreements signed between Iraq and the United States due to the presence of three things. Okay, the first they said, which was security and insufficient stability. So they told you security, but remember, security was resolved pretty much when the ISIS war ended in December of 17. They've, they've had a few minor hiccups, you know, a few um, missiles, whatever, launched probably most likely from Iran into the green zone. Um, but th they're reducing that and controlling that. Again, those are just minor little things, okay? But, but so for the most part, security at this point is most of the way under control, okay? They're going to still have a few... A few little hiccups here and there, but on a large scale, it's it's taken care of and controlled. Okay, the second, number two, the second is that the Iraqi ministries were not effective in amending some laws. Okay, they've worked on that through time. And again, they we don't know what all the laws are that do need to be amended. They've never told us that. So the only thing they've said up until recently Again, was they talked about amending the election law and the federal court law, but we don't know. We don't know because they haven't told us if those laws have to be amended for the rate change. Okay, but but 
we I really don't think anything else has to be done for the rate change. I I fully believe Iraq has met all of their benchmarks to be able to change the rate, and I'm going to tell you why in one second. Let's look at number three. Tensions in the relationship between the federal government and the Kurdish and regional government is what so right there they're showing you what the last delay is. Okay. Tensions in the relationship between the federal government and the Kurdistan region. Remember, guys, I kept telling you these were your delays. These had to be resolved before they would allow Iraq to go international, okay? Iraq has to have stability. They have to have a government that can work together before they're going to allow them to go international. Iraq, as a, as, a, as a country or government, can't get anything done if they can't work together, and they're not going to be productive, okay? That's why, that's why the Trump administration said, hey, once you guys can work together, okay, as a country, as a government, without any without any restrictions, then we'll let you go international. It's that simple. That's what you're seeing. Now, let's look at the last uh, piece in this. Okay, this is this is the reason why U.S. companies signed up to $8 billion worth of agreements while Iraq was here on August 20th. Okay, they this is why. They're telling you the political and economic reform, political, meaning... The political side of Iraq's been resolved. Okay, they're they're now in agreement. Okay, they're working together. That's what they're telling you. The political and economic reforms in Iraq creates the appropriate ground. Now, the reforms don't come until the rate changes. That's why you haven't seen reforms yet. Remember, the reforms are the white paper reforms. They told you that they might be submitting those to Parliament in September for approval. That's what I've always told you guys. Reforms require approval from the budget, but the budget is married and waiting on the rate change. Okay, so rate change would happen first, then budget would get implemented. Okay, and then once they implement the budget, boom, there's your reforms. They're funded. Okay, so that's that's how that happens. So right there, the fact that the fact that guys that uh U.S. companies back on August 20th signed approximately $8 billion worth of agreements with the country of Iraq. In my opinion, they're telling you there are no more delays, that Iraq's met all the benchmarks to change the rate, okay? That's what I want to stress to you. Now, a couple more things. Um, remember, these, these, these U.S. companies didn't just show up magically. They, they showed up at the request of the Trump administration, okay? That's because the Trump administration, they're in charge. They know that Iraq is becoming, the Trump administration knows they're in charge, they're in control. They know Iraq's preparing to go international. That's why the U.S. government or the Trump administration invited these U.S. companies, okay? So, and then right here in this article, they even further confirm that for you by, by this last sentence right here. The political and economic reform in Iraq creates the appropriate ground. Right there, they're telling you Iraq has now met all the benchmarks. They're preparing to go international, okay? Now, one more thing I want to stress to you in this. Um, remember this, and don't forget this. I had a chance to talk to a very well-informed, educated uh, uh, Dinar follower, and what they shared with me, guys, was this. They said, you have, they said here's the reason why the, the reason why the, the country and government of Iraq is coming to the U.S. is is not, it's mostly to sign contracts and MOUs with U.S. companies. Okay, that's what was stressed to me by this individual who was highly educated and informed in domestic and international contracts. They said the main reason why Iraq is coming here will be to sign contracts and MOUs which are memorandums of understanding with U.S. companies. They did. They signed $8 billion worth of agreements and contracts. Now, what this individual shared with me is that when they typically sign contracts, especially on an international lever, level, sorry, they have roughly about a 30-day execution period in there. Okay? Okay, so... Iraq met with U.S. companies, signed these agreements on roughly August 20th. When you add 30 days to August 20th when they met, guys, that 30-day execution period takes you to September 20th. So that would suggest to us they, they could be or might be, 
okay? Possibly changing the rate maybe around September 20th, but again, that's my opinion, okay? And that's, that's what was shared with me from someone who was highly informed and highly educated in international contracts, okay? So, so I just want to share that with you. I wanted to bring that back to you, okay? Because I know I shared that with you once, but I wanted to, you know, share it with you a, a second time here. So again, um, someone who was highly educated in international contracts with me shared that there's roughly going to be about a 30-day execution period in there that when they sign these contracts on August 20th, the contracts will be executed very close to or around September 20th, guys. And here's what I want you to think about now. Those contracts need the new rate, guys, okay? Remember, some of the stuff I showed you guys was like GE, who, who's going to redo Iraq's electrical grid, okay, and electrical infrastructure in the country of Iraq. They signed at least a $1 billion agreement. Now, what, what did I tell you guys all through last year? Reconstruction is post-rate change. And they just signed reconstruction agreements, guys. This is huge. I hope you're hearing this, okay? They signed reconstruction agreements. Part of it was with GE, $1 billion, okay? So, and remember again, for those for those international contracts or MOU agreements, those have about a 30-day, um, they have about a 30-day execution period in there. And the rate's got to be changed for that. So, that 30-day execution period, guys, is right around September 20th. So, I wanted to revisit that with you. Now, now guys, that's, that's the factual side of this. I want to revisit the faith side of this because I think there's, um, some very important things in the faith prophetic side. Now, here's one thing I want to stress to you guys on this. I do not put my opinion on the prophetic anymore. I've, I've stopped doing that because so many other gurus have put their, their own spin or opinion on a lot of these prophetic words. You can't do that with, with prophecy, guys. It's prophecy either, you know in your spirit what that means. If if that prophetic word is for you to receive, you know if it's for you. If it's for you, you'll receive it, and you'll know what it means, okay? When when an opinion is put on it, like every every guru's opinion I've heard on prophetic words, guys, they've ruined them all for you. Every single one has been ruined and has not been accurate. Like a while back, I heard one guru put his own spin on the whole, uh, the Kim Clement one about the, um, it was about a new... Or a um, like like a like a like kind of like a change in the financial system sort of thing. That wasn't the right word, but but and I actually Googled exactly what Kim Clement. I Googled it for you guys, and what Google flat out said is that there's a change. There's a change in a there's a change kind of in an economic system due to an unexpected event. But basically, what Kim Clement prophesied is that there would be kind of a change in the financial system within the Middle East, okay, is what he said. And this this guru just turns around and goes, oh, yeah, we have a new financial system coming. He completely ruined it because all it meant by a change in the financial system was is the, there would be a change in the Middle East due to lower oil prices due to an unexpected event of the coronavirus. That's all it was. But yet when this guru puts his whole spin on it, he ruined it for you guys and he shared it with you incorrectly. So that's we're not going to put opinions on this. We're going to we're going to show it to you. We're going to revisit it and kind of lay it out. OK, so. So um, let's just start from the beginning. You guys know that with the cover out of my channel. OK, I've got the. RV and I've got a same and again guys this whole video is my opinion should not be used for financial advice okay now I've got the RV and a St. Patrick's Day banner that's a prophetic word I received back in 2014 for my sister she just said hey she goes something's gonna happen regarding the rate change on March 17th and she goes I don't know what it is but that, that's an important day in this for you I said okay great so here's here's what I want to share in this um Look at this carefully. This was kind of the main reason I'm revisiting the prophecy with you. A year has never been revealed in this. All that's been revealed to us are events. No year. And so far we got one date of right here of March 17th. But again, 
No year has ever been revealed, only events, things that are going to happen. So let's look at that, guys, because you have to look at that at a deeper level, and you can piece some things together here, okay? So, so again, I got Mark 17th. So all I know from this, from what was prophesied to me through my sister, is that something's supposed to happen on a Mark 17th. Don't know what. Don't know the year. Again, no year was ever revealed on any level with these prophetic words. So on March 17th, what happened? Guys, the Dow reached 20,000 points. In reference to the Dow Jones, the Dow at 20,000 points. This is November 22nd, 2013. The Dow at 20,000 points. All of this connects to a massive breakthrough with regard to the dinar. I said 20,000. Look not to Wall Street. However, observe. 20,000. I'm hearing 20,000. 20,000. It will reach sooner than most people will think. I didn't know what 20,000 is. All I heard was 20,000. It shall get to 20,000. And so I'll say, well, it'll take years and years. The Spirit says, no, it won't. It'll, it'll, it'll be sooner than most people think. It'll be a shock. 20,000. Okay. So, so we have, that's, that's the first event we've saw within the prophetic was the Dow would hit 20,000 points, guys. Okay. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to put a, an opinion on this. Okay. Because every guru that has has ruined them for you. Not one has been accurate. That's, that's reality. This not one guru putting an opinion on prophecy has been accurate. So we're done doing that. We're going to leave it in its natural form. And we're going to put a different spin on this, okay? What does this mean? Why did God give this to us? Well, guys, God didn't give you a year. He gave you a bunch of events. You know what he's telling you in that? Is that when you see these events occur, that is the year in which you're going to be blessed with the rate change. That's how he revealed the year to you, was by giving you these events, okay? So... He gave us, um, he gave us this. He gave us the Dow at twenty thousand points. That's our first event marker. Okay. Then, then here's another one. But this is for you, says the Lord. The tide is turning for Israel. The tide is turning. For you, what speak I of, says the Lord, a very strange thing shall happen in September. What shall the rain comes to America? What shall the rain comes to my kingdom? Watch and see, for God says beginning in September, I will turn everything around and my people shall see an intervention of a kind that they have never seen before says the lord wasn't that an amazing word okay so that's the reason i do not put my opinion on prophetic words okay i'm not here to ruin it for you every guru that has put their own spin or opinion on a prophetic word has ruined it we're not doing it okay so that was an absolute amazing prophetic word that had september written all over it God said, this is for you. The tide is turning for you. A very strange thing shall happen in September. Watch how the rain comes to America. Watch how the rain comes to my kingdom. For God says, beginning in September, I'll turn everything around. And my people shall see an intervention of a kind that they have never seen before. Guys, it doesn't get any more clear than that. God just told you everything right there. That's not me. That's not my opinion. That was from God's mouth to your ears. Hey, God bless you guys and have a great day. Take care.